Legends. Tonight we welcome Australian quick bowler Ryan Harris. 27 matches for Australia, 113 wickets. Freakishly exactly the same as Bruce Reid actually, Rhino. But your average is slightly better at 23. You could bat a tad more than uh, than Bruce. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Nice to nice to chat. And you're right. I probably should have got 100 day, 100 that day. I was uh, you hitting a well. Thinking about it too much, and that's why I got out. So, <laughs> mate, uh, welcome and thanks for joining us. Uh, we we often get people on the show that are South Australian focused and doing a bit of research. We didn't realise that you're actually born in New South Wales, but we'll claim you as a South Aussie. <laughs> yeah, no, born in New South Wales, but moved over the uh, moved over to Adelaide. Um, probably, I think about the age of three and a half, four. So. Yeah. Um, some, yeah, grew up in the group. You go on. Some of your juniors. Where did you start your juniors here in SA? Oh, no, it was all, it was all in South Australia. It was all out of Salisbury. The Salisbury District Cricket Club. I was uh, I grew up playing cricket out there. Went to school out that way and played um, played all my cricket out in, in Salisbury. So, um, yeah, look, I, I grew up yeah grew up playing playing cricket and, and living in South Australia until I moved to Queensland. I was trying to remember, Rhino, whether it was still Salisbury or Northern Districts, but you were Salisbury, weren't you? I started off juniors at Salisbury. Yeah. Um, yeah. My first, my first first grade game uh, was for Northern Districts. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So um, I would have played. Oh, who knows how many games I would have played? I came through the grades, fourth grade, third grade, second grade. Um, it's it's playing for Salisbury, and then yeah, first grade debut was for Northern Districts. Okay. Now I remember you then watching watching you Rhino on the district traps, and you were probably really actually. An all very much an all rounder, and if anything, a batsman who bowled, who bowled a bit. When where did the extra yard of pace event then come from in the, from the development from there, Rhino? Yeah, I probably was that um, growing up, but the, the extra yard of pace probably didn't come until roughly two thousand and five. I was I was um, yeah, oh, I don't know. I, I get asked that a lot. I, I probably got I got a lot lot fitter, a lot stronger. Um, didn't do too much technically. I, I probably just got myself fit. I was a bit of a rat bag growing up. When I was contracted to South Australia, I, yes. I got um, got to the stage where I was, you know, didn't mind a drink and, and mucking around too much, not training properly, and um, got to the point around. I think it must have been maybe two thousand and four, maybe two thousand three, maybe two thousand four. I nearly lost the contract. I lost my contract actually, and yep. thankfully for my sake, unfortunately for someone else's sake, they didn't take one, so I got it back in the same year. So I lost my job and got my job back. So. Um, Got that, I didn't realise it was it was either time to be a proper professional or or you know I'm not going to be there in two or three years. So, yep. um, managed to get myself fit and and, and strong. And uh, Wayne Phillips is probably the one to credit for that. Um, you know, he was the one that sat me down and told me, you know, you've got to you got to, you got to sort yourself out. Otherwise, um, yeah, you're not going to be here in a couple of years. So, um, I did that and and worked hard and, and got fit. And um, you know, I guess the rest of history went from there. Started bowling quicker. That was a big thing about it, and, and landing the ball in a consistent spot. And yeah, I would say the rest of history from there. Probably. It's amazing those sliding doors moments uh, that uh, that sort of the the light bulb goes off and away you go. Yeah, it was. Um, it definitely was that because I, I probably didn't have a lot a lot of outside cricket. I had different little little jobs here and there, and um, yeah, didn't exactly know what I wanted to do outside. Never studied so. Um, I was still only, well, I was still, I'll say only, I was probably 23, 24. So, um, yeah, I needed to do something. And, um, I think I chose the right decision and, um, you know, went from there and, and yeah, as I said, you know, had a, had a, had a very, very good career. Well, okay career at South Australia. I wish I had been better, but then had a good career in Queensland and then probably obviously, you know, playing some games for Australia, which is, uh, something I probably never thought I would do, um, with Red Bull. If anything, it was probably White Ball, but, yeah. um, Managed to do well and, and perform well and consistently and um, you know, get some games in, with the Red Bull, which is fantastic. Now, Rhino, your, your last couple of years for South Australia, you did, you know, you came good and yep. inexplicably for mine were, were not offered what you should have been. Let's just say I may have been wandering into Adelaide Oval one day and ran into Ian McLaughlin and he wasn't expecting a person to come back with a hell of a lot of stats to cut him down in <laughs> cut him down in half. It's never exactly been my problem at speaking up in that regard. And uh, but as it turned out, to go to Queensland, the chance to bowl on the Gabba instead of here um, was a blessing in disguise as well. Um, 
a lot of people say that. Hey, I, I, I didn't see it that way. I, I actually really enjoyed bowling Adelaide Oval. Um, I always felt, obviously it flattened out a lot in, yeah. later in the game, but I actually really enjoyed bowling on the old Adelaide Oval, not, not as it is now with the droppings. But yeah, now, cool. yeah. Well, it's just yeah. getting. I mean, it's improving. It's getting better. But I actually really enjoyed it, and I, I like the ball because it reversed back into the game. Yep. Um, but yeah, to go and get bowl in the Gabba, I actually had to sort of try and I had to learn a new way to bowl in a way because the Gabba everyone thinks it's you know it's bouncy fast and That's but it's actually really four, it's, it? it's a hard it, it's a hard place to bowl. You've got to you know everyone thinks of you know you put the ball down and it's going to do it itself. You, you've got to still put it in the right spot. You've yeah. still got to you know um, yeah you you still got to make sure you're doing it with the ball and. And not and not expecting it to happen, so um, it's it's yeah. Look, it, I, I, luckily when I got there, I had Andy Bickle, I had um, I had Joe Dawes, who was bowling coach, who, who was a very good player, great player for Queensland. So yep. some good people in the corner. But I did, yeah. And obviously it was nice to go there and bowl there. But and everyone says, oh, because you moved there, you bowl in the Gabby, you played for Australia. I, I would have played for Australia. I feel that if I had stayed here as well, like the way I was bowling at the time. Um, I just, I just, you know, I was going well, so yep. I expected that, that was. Oh, no, that's happen, fair. So. Oh, as I said, mm-hmm. I thought you were treated disgracefully by South Australia, and uh, yeah. yeah, I wasn't afraid to say that either. Yeah, um, no, I appreciate that. I didn't know that, but no, look, I, I at the time it wasn't about. For me, it was more of it. You know, financially, it was pretty good, um, similar to Queensland. It was more about the extra year, but see, I didn't see that because I felt as though um, I, I wasn't a great athlete for for them. I was in and out for for six, for six seven years, and then um, you know the opportunity to try and get that extra year. Obviously, I wanted, but um, I can understand why they didn't want to give it, and that was fine with me as well, and Queensland did. So, you know, it was also a good opportunity for me to get away and, and a you know, fresh start and go on away and impress um, in a new environment and, and take the challenge on, and that's what I did. So I, I never really – I was never fouled the Redbacks. So I was disappointed, at, I guess, at the time that I was leaving, but it, it also ended up in a new chapter, and that was something that, you know, look back now, it was, it was you know, the right decision. Yep. And then the – the test of boo in New Zealand, mate. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty good. <laughs> um, yeah, you did okay. Yeah, did all right. Um, I dropped the catch in the second innings. I think from a fifer or the first, where we, I think it was the second innings. I took a fifer. I dropped the, dropped the catch. Daryl Tuffy, I think, was my fifer, but um, didn't get it. But um, yeah, it was obviously a dream come true. I had the family over there. It was everything about it, the whole thing. Ricky Ponting presenting my cap. It was just a, you know, it was a fantastic occasion as it is, as it, as it's built up to be and. As you know, when you when you get picked, and you you know the the the, the things you hear about the cap ceremonies, um, you know, is 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 everything, um, and you know, plus it's just such a, a great moment. It's a proud moment for for myself, but also my family over there. Test right, cap number four one three, yep. uh, something that obviously is going to uh, remain with you, uh, you know, as part of your memorabilia collection. Um, you spoke of Ricky Ponding sort of presenting it to you. Was was there anything there that's memorable from that that you can share with the listeners? Um, oh, just getting it from him um, and, and the whole moment. I guess the only memorable thing is my family got there in the last second. They weren't allowed in because security wouldn't let them in. So they, oh, they didn't wow. see the whole spill. They literally just got there as I was putting on my head, which which is disappointing, but that was security and that was what happened. But that was probably the only memory from that, the only negative memory. But um, no, look, it's just, it was a great moment. It was fantastic to, to get it from an idol who, who, who idolised and watched for so long and and who, who had a big influence on my career once I got playing. And the way he backed me and supported me was, you know, was fantastic. A guy, as you say, you look up to from afar, but when you get the opportunity to go and play under someone who you idolise um, and, and you, you sort of, I don't know. You don't really know him from afar. Obviously, when you get to know him, he's just a, a, the legend that you see on TV. Is exactly what he is. Um, it, it's um, yeah. It was it was it was amazing. It was just an amazing feeling. And as I said, I managed to play a few tests with him and under him. And um, you know, it was it was great to to see how he played the game and and how he tra- he taught me how to train as well. And, you know, I trained obviously better after you know that debacle here in Adelaide when I left, but well, yep. to get my contract, but. He he took he took it to the next level and taught us how to do it properly. He taught me how to do it properly, so that was a that was a positive. Now, a couple of quirky things. I'm hoping yeah. one of them you don't know about. Actually, it'll be interesting in a minute. But we will go on the first one that you could have played for England, mate. Yeah, that was that was a beat up, massive beat up. <laughs> I tried Damn to. That. I've, I've got, got it in I've, front I've, of I've me. Got, yeah. I've, I've, well, I've got no. That's tr- it's true. No, okay, that, that's that, okay. that is true. It was re- it was reported as being true. Um, well, it was reported. It wasn't true, but. Um. 
I had a I've got a British passport, so I went out to play for trying to play a year at Sussex as a as an Englishman. I virtually had to say I was going to play for England, but I was never really going. I was never going to. Right. Um, and um, just to play a season over there. So now I think they brought it in. I think it's called the Robinson Rule or something that you can go have a year over there, Grace. But I was trying to do that, I couldn't do it. So, um, and 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 it was all out that oh, he's going to play for England. Well, I was never, I was never going to. So, right, let's go see see if this one. You realise there's uh, five bowlers who've done any of them, uh, any of them, Rhino. Oh, um, one of them, you, you should get one of them. One of them, you do. It was uh, Gates at Adelaide Oval. Well, yep. Bruce. Um, Bruce Yardley. Bruce Yardley. Yeah. Um, no, the others aren't oh, Australian. Right. Dilip Doshi, left arm. Oh, as if left... I'm going to get all these. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's Sergeant Armel. It's just a just much five for uh, at Lords, mate. Yeah, mate, it's it's that special, obviously, um, to play a game at Lords. You know, I'll play a couple of games there. For, um, lucky to play a couple of games there. Obviously, one Test match, but to be on the board there was was nice. I I, I didn't miss, I didn't play the first Test of that series and got a call up for the for the um. For the second test, which was which was nice, but to be able to play there and um, you know yeah take five and have and uh, and get the name on the board is obviously a great thing. And I've been sent a, a nice bit of memorabilia about that from Lords. So I've got that at home and and a couple of family members actually, my aunties and uncles have um, have um, you know been through Lords the tour and see my name on there and taken photos. So it's quite a nice thing. Yeah, uh, that's uh, that that's there and um, yeah something I always cherish. Two other individual things. Uh, hitting a six for South Australia to win a one one day, I reckon it was, against Queensland? Yeah, that was against Queensland. I was, I was talking to Dizzy about that. He was at the other end, Big Diz. I was right. talking about that just the other day. Um, I'm confident that you had actually... more chance to hit it for six than Diz, mate. <laughs> well, he, no, I wouldn't say that because he's made a test 200. He, yeah. That'd be his go-to. Yeah, so. I know. That would, <laughs> be, that would be his comeback line. Very true. D- Dizzy's been in some uh, pretty memorable run chases, and there's another yeah. one. Yeah, he has, and he was at the other end, and um, yeah, it happened. I think it was the next year I might have gone to Queensland. I think I'm not sure. I'm not sure on that. It might have been 2007. I think I did that. Um, but no, it was it was look. That was obviously a, a great great moment, and I, I remember that very very clearly. Um, you know, Queensland had run through us, and they bowled all their bowlers, and we managed to fight. And Lachlan Stevens was the bowler who uh, who was was tasked with bowling the last over, and I managed to get him. So that was a good thing. And then let's go the other ball of the century, the yeah. the ball in Perth to get uh, to get Alastair Cook. That was abs- Is that the best ball you ever bowled? Uh, well, it's up there, <laughs> definitely. Um, <laughs> Jeez, if you I bowled, bowled any others as good in, as that, I'll well, I bowled a couple of good ones through the whole career. But I bowled a couple of good ones in England actually in 2013. Joe Root, I think I got yes. Matt Pryor, I got a couple, but. Um, yeah, that, that's obviously one that, you know, I think the one that, that one stands out, obviously, first ball of the third test, you know, to win the Ashes for Australia. And that was, you know, that was a big wicket for us. It always was, obviously, yep. Cook, um, you know, a huge wicket for us. And, um, and and to be able to get, you know, get off to a start to, to win the Ashes, it was a big day that for for us, for that for that group. And um, to be able to do that, I guess, um, yeah, it was, was amazing. And again, I, I mean, I get it every year. Um, you know, October 11, my birthday. Um, that's nothing, when it all comes out again. Nothing wrong so with that. Gets reminded. <laughs> exactly right. So, uh, so Rhino, the frustration of so many injuries in your career, mate. Because yeah, let's go th- yeah, it, it was probably it was probably a number of things with you know not looking after yourself earlier and being a bit of a bit of a dickhead and rat bag and all that sort of stuff. But um, you know, I guess I didn't have you know I had a lot of. I didn't have a lot of soft tissue injuries. It was more structural things. So when I did it, I really did it good. And, uh, you know, and in the end, it got me, you know, my knee in the end. That was the reason I finished. Yeah. Because um, I, I was 35. I was probably a young 35 because I hadn't played a lot of cricket. So um, that was the thing that got me in the end. And, and again, that was a bit of stupidity of the reason that, that, that that happened. You know, I had a knee operation, had a uh, meniscus repair. And after about, it was about a six month recovery. After about three months, I was taking hangers up blokes back at school and ripped it again. And, <laughs> and, and they, and they had to remove the meniscus. And in the end, that's where, my, where I ended up damaging my leg, my, my bone, my, my bone. And that's what cost me, um, you know, it cost me more, more games, I guess. So, um, but I had different things here and there, you know, knees and, and shoulders and back. So I didn't have yeah. too many back problems that kept me out, but it was just when I did something, I did it good. And it was a, it was a period of time out. 
Now, uh, most of our guests, uh, we often talk about how far they've travelled. Uh, you obviously born in New South Wales, but obviously here in South Australia, you ended up at Sussex, then at Queensland, uh, in Queensland. Uh, you played for the Declan Chargers uh, at yep. Surrey and then the uh, Kings 11. Yep, yeah, I played all them Declan Chargers. I ended up going there in 2009, which is the second year of IPL. Ended up winning the, the comp there, um, which was great. Um, played a couple of games at Surrey. Again, that's where my knee started to flare up. Well, I had an opportunity probably to play about six or seven games. I ended up playing probably two. Um, and then, yeah, heading back over the IPL, we, you know, with, with Kings 11, played there and, and even went back and coached a year there, which is which was which was fantastic as well. So I think that's the unique thing about cricket. It can take you all around the world. And, you know, I've travelled playing to a lot of places. And, you know, India especially, I, uh, you know, I, I didn't play a test match in India, which was disappointing. Um not to get that under my belt, but uh, you know I've been over there and, and, and played IPL and, and coached over there, which is fantastic. So, uh, you know, South Africa is a great place. England's a great place. Sri Lanka is a beautiful place. West Indies is a great place. So, you know, I've managed to travel around and see all them. Well, you've sort of led me into my next question, which we normally ask a little bit later in the interview, but we'll ask it while we're here now. Your favourite ground that you've you've played at, um, you know, here in Australia and also overseas? Oh, it's hard to pinpoint one. Um, you know, the MCG, I've had the, I've had the job of the first ball on Boxing Day at the MCG against the National Series. So, you know, that's that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, pretty hard to go past. But, but Adelaide Oval, even Adelaide Oval back then, when it was the old Adelaide Oval, but now it's just, it's, it's just <clears throat> excuse me, it's just unbelievable. Um, it was a place, to, great place to play. Uh, overseas, obviously, Lords is up there as well. Uh, Lords is massive. Um, you know, and then far out, Cape Town. Uh, Cape Town with that, you know, Table yeah, Mountain in the table background. Mountain, yep. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful ground, beautiful place to bowl, um, great place to play. And um, so it's hard to pinpoint one. I've played at so many great grounds. Barbados even, um, you know, was, was, a, was a great place to play. So been lucky enough, as I said, to travel around and, and play at those grounds. Now, a serious one, Buff, Buff's influence. You know, obviously most, you know, the most influential person, but not only cricket, but life. Um, Darren's yeah, influence yeah. overall, mate. Go for it. Yeah, he's been like he's been like a second father to me, Buffer. Yeah. Um, you know, my whole cricketing life, he's had, he's been a part of it. Even from the Salisbury days, I used to go and watch him as a kid. Yep. Um, he's, you wouldn't believe he's just actually texting me right now. How funny is that? So yeah, that's not um, a, that's not a total surprise. No, no. <laughs> you know, no, no. He, he, you know, from a young kid, I used to go and watch him, and you know, you know, all the greats at Salisbury that I grew up with, and taught me how to play the game, and and. Um, you know, and and you know he's he's been there just about I think all, all but probably one, maybe two years in my cricket senior cricketing life he's been a part of it. Whether it's been captain, when I moved to Queensland he came up I think a year later to 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 um to coach yeah. Brisbane in the T20, uh, and he is interim coach for the Shield team for the rest of that season because we lost our coach. So he all about that two years. And obviously playing for Australia as well. We went there and he followed. Well, I keep saying he followed me, <laughs> but. <laughs> Um, but in my whole cricketing career, he was almost—he was almost—he was there. So, as, as a, as a like, he's still one of my best mates, and, yep. and will be until the day we die. But um, yep. just a great bloke cricketing. He was always honest with me. He, he, he'd have a crack at me when he did. He'd compliment me when he when he, when he could. And and as I said, off the field, he supported me through losing my mum. You know, he lost his mum and dad yeah. now. And yeah. you know, so we, we we've been great mates. And you know, being in Queensland before I came here, we we worked really closely together with the second eleven team up there. And travel together and you know just you know sit and talk you know what together it's just it's, yep. it's always great it's nothing you can't you can't tell each other and he still helps me now he's you know he's helped me on this coaching journey to make the decision to come to South Australia was one of the hardest ones I've made um and he and he I, you know he was the one I probably confided in the most so yeah um you know we, we're going to be made to the sense of the day we die the day we die and I, I love him and, and he's such a just a, a great person oh, he's so genuine look I I was there that for the the famous Salisbury win. I think it's mm. the most famous district cricket win here in South Australia, where Salisbury chased down the four hundred odd mm. when when Nobsy had made two hundred plus for West Torrens and Buff went out to bat. He batted about eight, I reckon, and just went out and just the typical Darren Lehman. We grew to love you. We just dinked it. Knew exactly yeah. like the human computer batting. 70-odd not out to win the game, 74 not out, I reckon, in the dark to chase down 400. Yeah. It was incredible. I think he was only 16 then too, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. And he's yeah, just, I, I, just I remember that. I never seen his, yeah. 
I didn't see that, but I remember I read it. I used to, I mean, I read up about a lot of our stuff from yeah. the club and you'd see photos and you'd hear people talk about that a lot. And I think, I mean, even he still talks about it. He remembers just about every hit he has. So, yeah. Um, no, very, yeah, he's, yeah, I mean, he's a legend. He's a legend out there. He, yeah. he goes, it's the thing about it when he comes home, he, most of the time, um, you know, he comes back every a lot now, pops back to see his grandkids. And, yeah. uh, but most of the time he's here for a bit, he'll pop out and see all the mates from out that way. And that's, you know, that was his yeah, club and he never forgets them. That's Darren, and yeah, my dad's involved still with East Iron, so I st- still see a fair bit of, you know, buff out there, and yeah, that's. Yeah. Uh, Jake did hit a ball on the road a couple yeah, two, right. two years ago, and uh, Darren got there, and some said, "Hey, five minutes too late." Jake just hit one on the road, and Buff's replied, "Yeah, been there, done that, did that three or four yeah, times." Yeah, exactly himself, right. right. <laughs> exactly right. Mate, uh, we've been watching some of your footage here uh, on the video that we've got going uh, of some of your highlights, and. Um, Mate, there's a couple of five wicket hauls there that uh, must stand out for you. Oh, which ones? I mean, <laughs> I know that sounds. I don't mean to sound arrogant. Which no, ones? No, I mean, we're, I've we're, got the worst memory in the world. That's right. We're looking at a couple from here in Australia. I'm assuming one would be at, in Perth. Yeah, one at the Wacker in 2000. And, uh, when was that? 2010, 11. Yep. Yeah, that was a nice one. Um, Again, we're under the pump that series. That was my first Ashes series, and we're under the pump. We ended up losing it, obviously. But um, I miss Brisbane. Played uh, Adelaide, lost heavily, and then obviously we get to Perth trying to win that to keep the series alive, and we didn't. We, yeah, obviously, and then went to Melbourne. I ended up breaking down in Melbourne, ended up breaking my leg. <laughs> so um, that that series I remember, unfortunately. Yeah, that was. In fact, that was the last time England won the series in Australia. So that's why that stands out. But. Um, yeah, look, it's always nice to take five wickets, no matter where you are. And, yeah. you know, whether you've got obviously test test five is great, but you know, taking five um, wickets for Queensland or South Australia was always a priority as well, and that was that was my job. So I always enjoyed doing it. And then on the coaching merry-go-round, you know, you, did you start originally with the high performance bit in Brisbane with uh, with Maddie Herb Elliott? Yep, I did. Um, that was my first job out, my first full time job out. So I had a year. Well, after I retired, I had probably had a year out and, and was doing bits and pieces here and there and learning learning the craft. And I mean, I'd, I'd started the coaching journey from from way earlier, from five or six years earlier, because of because of the injuries, as we mentioned. And with Buff being around, he, he was able to get me on some you know just some opportunities that um, you know to, to experience coaching. So and I've done a lot, I've done all my courses. I, I, I you know I've, I've read up a lot about coaches and see what coaches doing. So I had the opportunity. So. When that finished and the opportunity came up, I um, I was actually on an Australian tour as an assistant in New Zealand when I when I applied for well, when I an interviewed for that role and for the it was basically it's called the national it was national performance school which is the, the old cricket academy so uh, I got that along with Matty Elliott and and, and only, well, well I ended up working with him for ten months because he ended up leaving but um, yeah it was a great I mean, it was a great experience to work with him uh, he was, he's got a great cricket brain and. Yeah. From there, and I guess from there on, it just sort of snowballed, and, and I was I managed to be there for five years. Did did two World Cup, other than nine World Cups. Um, you know, did did obviously a number of Australia A tours and a couple of Australian tours, and and then obviously went into Queensland. At that that end of the cricket show, went to Queensland and, and did the pathway there for a couple of years. But I was also, also you know obviously I wanted to try and get into senior roles. I had a couple of senior roles I knocked back from other states and. And here I am now in Adelaide. So um, yeah, it is. It is. It is what it is. What was coaching ever on the mind while you were playing, or is this something that's yeah. just sort of popped yeah, up? It always was. Yeah. No, it always was. I loved it. I always enjoyed talking about the game. I probably didn't see the game in the light of a captain, but I always enjoyed talking about the game and loved it. So um, yeah, look, it, it was always what I wanted to do, and you know, as I said, luckily I've, I've been I've been lucky enough to fall into it. So and so. <laughs> So in Queensland, so were you bowling coach as well with the Queensland side last season? Oh, I wasn't. I was sitting under Andy Bickle. Right, okay. Um, so I was sort of advising uh, under him. So, um, yeah, I wasn't as such uh, the bowling coach, but uh, I'm obviously there for experience. So. And how do you feel looking at South Australia this year? You know, we, we've got a bit of depth, probably, probably as much depth as we've had for a while in fast bowling. I, I just feel sorry for the guys having to bowl on... Karen Rolton, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's changing. That's changing because there's a drop in two drop in wickets there now. So that's okay. Change. Okay, that's only just happened. So now we've got a lot of depth. I'm really excited about. It. That's half the reason I moved here. I saw the depth that we had, and you know we've um we've got a lot we've got a lot of good depth there. So we just got to try and keep them all fit and, and going in the right direction. And, and um 
and, and hopefully, you know, we, we, we take 20 wickets a game. If we do that, then we, we um, you know, we're going to win lots of games. And obviously, we've got to get runs, but we'll, we'll do that and hopefully, you know, to keep the boys oh, look, um, cook, so, cooking as, nicely. As someone who's, you know, has led the odd tragic life. I have been at a Shield game where there were 16 people there and I knew every one of them. I realised I had a problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. At Karen Rolton, watching you know, the last couple of years, honestly, it's just – I've I felt sorry for the bowlers. It's just been – Yeah, it's been bad. It oh, has been bad. Terrible. But, but again, it's – it's it's you know, unfortunately, with the, sl- the quick turnaround from footy yeah. that they have there, there's just no time for, for Trent Kelly, who works there as a keeper, oh, yeah, to get yeah. stuff yeah. up. So, yeah, I'm not having you know, a go up front in that regard. Well, yeah, but they, they they've they've sorted that. They've um they've got a they've got a they've dropped in two wickets down there, which is which is going to help us. So good. So Ryan, it was funny growing up. I think we all thought probably one day I was going to be more the go than possible test wise. Mm-hmm. You didn't play a huge number of one days, twenty one one days. With the uh, although the five for nineteen uh, does stand out well and truly, Ryan. Just a bit about what your one days, mate. Yeah, a little, a little. I'm even to this day disappointed I didn't play many more or more yeah. one days. But um, again, that was around the time my knee was starting to play up. So um, was, we sort of pro- well, I, at first I didn't. The cricket Australia sort of started prioritising Test cricket, uh, and then I sort of understood what my knee, what was going on with my knee, and then realised that every ball I bowled was getting closer and closer to retirement. So I sort of I jumped on board with it. But um, yeah, look, I, I wish I. I loved playing one day cricket for the show. It was, 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 was amazing. And I fought bloody hard to get into the team. I, I was in and then I was out. And then I tra- fought hard to get back in. I got in and then I, I tried so hard that I bowled badly and got out. And then obviously the talk about my knee. So it was a disappointing end. But I mean, I, I had a good time when I was there. I managed obviously I got two, two, two on the trot against Pakistan. Uh, one in Perth and one in Adelaide. So yep. two fighters. So um, yeah, look, it was a great, again, a great period of time to be able to be playing um, well, two forms. I was sort of around the T20, in and out of that. But nice to be playing two forms of the game and and, yeah, and and enjoying that. So, as I said, one day cricket was always was great. But you're right. I, I, I that was that was something I, I mentioned earlier that you know if I was ever going to represent Australia, it was probably going to be more on that shorter format as an all rounder. And um, and you know, and lo and behold, I, as I said, once I sorted myself out and and yeah. started playing some decent cricket, then the Red Bull stuff came along too, which. Um, which obviously, yeah, well, I mean, all of it was a green dream come true, but to be, yeah, as, as we've already spoken about, receiving the baggy green uh, cap was, 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 a, was a massive bonus and a huge dream come true. And you did get to the 300, and, uh, 300 just over the 303 first-class wickets too, too, Rhino. Yeah. Yeah, again, that, that's, I guess that's something that I, I, you know, people ask me in my stats. I, I know my test stats, really, but I don't know much else about what I did and, you know, I think you know, when you hear that, and 300's not bad. Uh, well, these days, in this day and age, you know, bowlers seem to take a lot more than that. But you know, 300 is a good number. As I said, if yeah. I had played a bit more through a few injuries here and there, it might have, it would have been more. Hopefully, it might yeah. be more. But yeah, again, I don't, I don't have, um, I don't have too many regrets. You know, once I, once I did get, get on the, you know, the, the right way and and started bowling well, I, I bloody enjoyed every minute of it. It was good fun. I got so, one. I've um, got one in your career that you never played in a winning South Australia Shield side. But unfortunately, I say that to most people, mate. Is that true? I'm just saying, out of set, mucking around, saying <laughs> oh, about. Right. I was going to say. No, 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 I'm about. Sure you won a game. No, no, no. I'm saying about not winning a shield. I'm oh, s- sorry, a shield. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. No, for sorry. me, yeah, for me, so for me, the Sheffield Shield is the game. holy grail, mate. So. Well, again, going back on to about the Queensland move, originally, um, you know, we spoke about playing at the Gabba and playing for Australia. That 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 was the whole. Well, well at the time was. You know, a new opportunity, but another reason why I moved, I wanted yeah. to win a trophy. And yeah. I don't know, and I'll say it to the boys this, to the, now, the group we play, um, how we didn't win a trophy around that time when I was, um, you know, playing for South Australia was, it still gets me because of the sides we had. Yeah, we had sides know, it, where we should have been better, no doubt about it. We that. should have been, we absolutely. And, and, and you know, and, and so, you know, to, to go away and, um, you know, as I said, I, my dream when I moved away was to play. Um, obviously, the big dream was to play for Australia, no doubt. I'm not going to lie about that. But to move to Queensland, who, who you know, won so many shields around that yeah. time beforehand, to win a Sheffield Shield was was what I wanted to do. I'd sit and watch it, you know, on TV as a kid, yep. and I wanted to play in that game. That was my that was my test match, and um, yeah, to go up and do it. I mean, to, to, that day I remember it 
so clearly together against Tasmania and you know, we were in a hell of a trouble and Chris Hartley and Steve McLaughlin put on this amazing Yes, that's and, right. Yeah. And 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 to win it, mate, that was that was oh, I've had kids, so I've had a pretty good couple of days with the kids and getting married, but that was up there and, and obviously my test debut yeah. and baggy green. But winning a winning a trophy, winning a Sheffield shield, mate, it was a very emotional day for me and um, you know, something I again I always remember and um, you know, it was it was fantastic. So that you know, that was another big reason why. Yeah. Um, to, to be to have to be offered the opportunity to go to a place like Queensland that was so strong, so you know, um, sport driven and and cultural culturally driven um, of winning, you know, it was it was a not was a massive um, oh, what's the word, uh, um, you know, Philip to so, go there, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. You know, just for them to to come to me and 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 you know invite me, I guess up there was was such a, a great thing. So. Uh, and, and being up there for so long, I just see how they they get it. They just do sport so well. well know, the weather the helps. weather helps as well. Yeah. Well, that helps. So I mean, yeah. more it's more about more about it's winning's like in the blood, and that sounds yeah. like silly, I know, but it, they just know how to win. I mean, I've watched so many State of Origins, you know, and, and they just Queensland shouldn't have won, and they did, and 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 just other just sport up there, they just know how to win. They don't give up. And, Which and is ironic, just, isn't it? Because this, I know I'm older than you, Rhino, so out of that. But the yeah. standard joke where Queensland kept losing the shield, they grab defeat well, they from did. the jaws of victory so many times, Correct. and it, yeah. it was a standard joke of of Queensland losing in the shield and Collingwood losing and mm-hmm. losing another final yeah. in the AFL for years. You know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, 94, 95, wasn't it? Yeah. In this crazy world we live in, we all need the distraction. Enjoying the show? Like, rate, and subscribe. Hook up and connect with us on social media at SportsCast SA. We'll see you next time on Game On.